Yeah, the idea was a complex one with fabric because fabric has so much movement in it. And I wanted to put some wind in that fabric to create the flow and increase the size of the fabric. So when the folds of the fabric are in the wind, you get those lovely reflections, uh, highlights on the surface, and uh, the mid-tones and shadows in all the folds of that fabric. So that was the idea. It was about flow and movement. I wanted a pure white background, so I've, I've used two orbiters, and they've both got a 60 degrees open face optic on them to give me the widest spread. For my key light in the front, I've used the Fresnel, and the joy of that one is it's giving me a hard light with a bit of a softer edge to it with the, with the Fresnel lens in the front. And the nice thing about this Fresnel on the orbiter is that I can control the degrees of spread, so I can turn it from a spot or go to a, a medium spread or a full flood spread. So having that ability to control the Fresnel from the control panel without having to move the light is just awesome, really. And then we've got a second orbiter with a small dome on there just to really lift the shadows and complement the shadow to mid-tone ranges to balance the shot. So the thing for me with my model today, I just wanted very strong, elegant poses. And for that, I almost wanted my model to have a bit more dominance over the viewer's angle. So for that, my camera angle was a bit lower. I'm shooting quite a wide angle lens so I can get that upward perspective. The thing is nowadays that, you know, clients, both commercial as well, are all wanting moving image um, as well as stills. They expect that as part of the, the workload and we can use exactly the same lighting setup without changing or worrying about anything and just make some exposure adjustments for moving image. And then, you know, you're working with your model and uh, doing pans and cuts for your editing process to, to put together some short video runs. After shot one, we moved on to more of a, more of a beauty look, a beauty shot, so we're, we're cropped quite in close, more head and shoulders. Uh, still using fabrics for shapes, because we wanted to just frame the face in many different ways and show elements of the face, and not all of the time. So the lighting on that, I've used another orbiter, but with a medium-sized dome on there. Um, of course, the domes are omnidirectional, so it's just spreading light everywhere. And to control that a little bit, Ari made this attachment for the domes called a skirt and it's, it attaches with Velcro, and it comes in, in sort of quarter sections. It's silver lined, and we can attach it to the back of the dome so we have no light coming back into camera. And then the, uh, the light is hitting the silver surface and pushing back forwards towards our model, and giving us a little bit more output and a little bit more control. The light is very even with a very soft spread, but it has a bit of a crisper punch to it in the middle. So for creative purposes, I've just gone for that. And where we've had the light just above the model's eye line, just above camera, it's giving us a little bit heavy on the shadow and we've just used a, another softbox on another orbiter on quite low power just to fill the shadow areas to even out the, the dynamic range, the contrast a little bit to soften those edges. Just to give a bit of separation, we just wanted a little bit of a, a highlight and a rim light down one side of the model. So we've got another orbiter behind and over the, the model's right shoulder. And to control that, we've used the optical projector where we can control the shutter blades on this to really narrow this light down and, and control its output. Didn't want it too strong, so dialing the power down on that because it's a very hard light source. It's just enough to give me a beautiful rim light down this side um, and off the shoulder. Just a little bit of separation. The good thing is with the orbiters is that is the, the, the way the quick lighting mount works. I mean, it's a very simple bayonet twist function and we just need to press the release catch and rotate a few degrees back and we can change the optics or attachments on the front of there. So a really simple method to do it. And with, this, with the smaller modifiers, you can do that almost you know, one-handed, which is really cool. As we've said, you know, it's continuous light, so what you see is what you get in front of camera, so you can just see it happening in front of your eyes. So you can make quick decisions with that quite nicely. So yeah, we've got a lot of great images in there today, and it's going to be really hard to choose which, which ones to edit. Um, it's going to be a hard decision for someone, that's for sure. <laughs>